One of the necessary skills in working with your DNA results is the ability to build trees from family data. Whether you are just figuring out your genealogical heritage or are working with the DNA results to identify your unknown family, you will build trees. One of our searchers says, build the trees and they will come. Do not put photos, files, or attachments in your trees until you have stabilized them, as you may have to rebuild your trees several times. Make a folder to store them on your computer and add them later. Family trees done by hand can take many forms. Even though computer-generated trees are pretty standard in format, many tree-building products can print the less common forms. Most trees are shown on a computer in one or both of the views. A pedigree view, shown on this page, or the family view, shown on the next. The pedigree tree shows only direct ancestors, but in most cases, the boxes can be opened to see children, spouses, or siblings. Most find this pedigree view to be simpler. This is the other standard view, a family view. Both of these views are in Ancestry.com. The family view also shows children, but both of these views can hide what we call the inner branches. For genealogy, these trees are adequate. But for looking for missing family members, you need to identify all of the offspring of every generation and their spouses. There is certain information that is standard to put in a tree and perfectly adequate for your research trees. However, once you are doing a tree for your family to display all of the members, it is much more interesting to include all the life information that you can. Where did they live at different times? What did they do? Were they in the military? And where did they go to school? There are many places to get historical information. You have to practice to get really good at it. Sometimes you need to show some imagination in these searches. There are many sources listed at dnaadoption.com. Remember to keep your tree simple when you are searching. Get fancy later. One of the views you can have of an individual in Ancestry.com is the profile view. This is kind of the workshop for the individual in an Ancestry tree. When in doubt about how to do something, try the tools area. Not shown in this view, but it's there. Okay, so now you have an idea of what a tree looks like and what it contains. Let's try making one. Just the basics and relationships. Diane was married twice. She had four children with Larry and none with Carl. Diane's parents are Kenneth and Leonor. Use your family names and include whoever you want. The same kind of information plus more details goes on a family worksheet. You can find blank genealogy charts on many sites, including familysearch.org. There are a number of different types. Take your pick. You really do need an Ancestry.com account to do your search. The availability of hints from their huge database is a big plus. Learn a few computer skills and then do your trees on a computer. You can install genealogy software on your computer. Some packages are even free. You can buy software, use online software, or try Ancestry.com. Ancestry.com and some packages have the ability to tie hints into your search. If someone's name is unknown, then put unknown in the last name. If someone is alive, but you don't want to show their name, put living as the first name. This is also a good way to fill in the blanks that you don't know. Add a tree name. Don't copy it from one of your matches tree names. To keep your tree private while it's in a research tree, uncheck the box by the arrow. Then save this page.
then start adding people. Use the standard entry forms for the field. See date, surnames, and places on the chart above for the format. When you make up a new tree, set the home person as yourself if it's your tree. If it's your cousin, Laura's, then set her as the home person. The home person enables you to calculate relationships with ancestors. If your profile view does not show a relationship to the home person, you need to go back to this screen and set it. When you set up a new tree, check the privacy settings. If it's a speculative tree, not only should private tree be chosen, but also the ability for the tree to be searched should be prevented by checking here. Ancestry and some of the other genealogy packages do some matching of data for you and suggest people who match individuals in your tree. Just check to be sure that they do match. The view shown for Kenneth Wiley comes up when you click on his box in the tree. To see the tree view based on a particular person, click on the symbol to the right of the choices. The green leaf here can be clicked on, although sometimes it wants to move around on you, and the list of hints will come up for you to evaluate. When you click on the crossed tools icon, it will let you view the family tree for this individual, add relatives to that tree, and delete this person from the tree, but not from the database. The owner of the view of the little family tree will have an add relative tab. The window that comes up lets you choose the relative to add. A new individual add screen comes up, so then you can add them. You can add other information in fax. Fax will be transferred in the GEDCOM if you move a tree. There is a long detailed drop down list of fact choices, or you can create custom fax. Here under the education fact, I added where my mother went to high school. The profile view also has a long list of facts that have been added through searches. It also shows you the immediate relatives. Tabs allow you to see the life story ancestry has made up from facts about this ancestor. Some facts are automatically added, like when you save information from an ancestor. When searching, it's a good idea to add all ancestors, public records, and directory results, as you may wish to know where the ancestor was at a particular time. This was covered in the ability to add through the small family view. The important thing to know is that those who are siblings under me are also children of my parents, in this example. The Ancestor Member Trees hints show immediate family information for Leonor as extracted from Ancestry.com trees. In this view, I can click in a little box up in the left-hand corner of each family rectangle, however it is not available in this screen clip. I can choose one or more rectangles that have the correct information, then I can incorporate this information into my tree. When you compare the information in the selected rectangles, you can then add individuals who look correct into your tree. Remember, parents are older than their children. Pay attention to what you're adding. Don't just go into a hypnotic auto-click mode. When I selected a rectangle in the Ancestry Tree Hints, I chose one that had Leonore's parents in it. It also had two or three of her siblings. So, I merged this hint with the tree, and it added her parents and the two siblings to the tree. This is what my grandfather's section of his family tree looks like now. The hint also added his siblings to the tree. You can pick and choose which members and which facts to change from the matches presented. If you are an adoptee, start with the tree of your closest cousin and add and change things for your own version of the tree as you find them. Okay, so this is all the members of the tree so far. So, to do a tree for a second cousin match, 
I would try to find a common ancestor. In this case, it's the top pink rectangle's father. So, one of the siblings of the top pink rectangle leads to my second cousin Nancy's branch of our common family tree. These are the kinds of facts that Ancestry adds from the hints on the individual. If I were doing an adoption search, it would be very useful to know where she lived every 10 years and to place other milestones of her life among them. So, if I go with the hints and merge the results of the consensuses that she has been in, I would add residences for 1920, 1930, and 1940, just from the hints. I added a fact about her high school education earlier in this presentation, and I also added her college education. You can see where it added her high school and college educations to her list of facts. Other things to add are when she met my father, other places that she lived post-census, what her occupation was, and her death information, just as a start. No matter how hard you try, you will get duplicates in your trees. In Ancestry, there is no list of duplicates and you can only correct one at a time. If your tree is getting big, export it to a GEDCOM file and then upload it to a software that will identify all of the duplicates and will fix more than one at a time. If you continue with your duplicates, you will find that your relationships are not calculating properly. After you fix the file, say in Roots Magic, then download the corrected tree to a GEDCOM file, delete the original Ancestry tree, and upload the corrected GEDCOM to make a corrected tree. To merge duplicate people, check my profile view, go to the Tools option at the top right of the tree, and select Duplicates from the drop-down menu, then click on Merge. It will show the two me's as person one or person two. This view shows that I have also clicked on the compare option at the top of the page so the view shows the data available for the two me's. I want my full name, so I will click on the little circle that appears next to that version of my name and then on merge again. I will now be one person again. Editing from the profile view is the same as editing from the family tree view. This one's confusing. You go to this option to add or to modify parents, spouses, and children. This can also be done in the family view. Be sure to check siblings, spouse, and parents to make sure it is correctly shown. There is a delete person option here. This differs from the one shown in the quick edit, which only removes the person from the tree. This one removes him from the database. If you are not seeing hints that add all the information that you want to add, run the search to look for other information, such as immigration data and naturalization, which is not being offered through the hints. If you don't get what you want there, you will need to check other sources to find it. You're missing immigration information. Click on the immigration and travel category to narrow the search. If you're missing death information, drill down through several categories to look for it under birth, marriage, and death. The gallery is available here. This shows all the media that you have added to this person. Remember, add this after the tree is stable or else you'll lose the information if you need to switch your tree to a JEDCOM. GEDCOMs are a great thought. They include the main details of the tree and let you save it in a compact form or move the tree from one software to another. You can also attach it to an email and send it to someone and they can build the tree where they need it. If you want to look at your GEDCOM, use Notepad or WordPad to open it and don't save any changes.
Remember, Ancestry doesn't let you identify and merge multiple duplicates, check for errors in your tree, let you merge two or more files, let you split files, allow you to change from lowercase to caps, run reports, produce custom charts, or let you universally change spelling in your tree. For these operations, you need to use a PC-based software package. You have now learned the steps to building a tree on Ancestry. The process is very similar in all software packages. The tree you saw an example of here, my family tree, has eventually reached over 40,000 individuals. Family trees are key to what we are doing, so this is an essential skill to develop.